and I'm not afraid because God loves me. The word of the Lord just came to me. Hallelujah. Sometimes um, loyalty can be our greatest enemy. Because we're loyal to things and ways and methods. To the hindrance of what God is calling us to do. When God called me to start this church, there were things that I learned from my spiritual father that he said, don't do it that way, do it this way. And I was afraid because I don't want my action to be interpreted as disloyalty to him. The Lord had to remind me. He said, son, you're connected to me. I've sent the connection to him as my gift to you, but you have to keep it in its place. That if I ever start speaking to you to do a thing that's unfamiliar, don't cling to what's worked for somebody else. Because it didn't work for them. I said, what do you mean? He said, what worked for them is they did what I told them to do the way I told them to do it. If you're going to do what they do, you're missing the magic. The magic is do what I say. And do what I say even if I tell you to do it in a method contrary. Your spiritual father knows the love that you have for him. That's not in question. And you don't ever need to be afraid of doing things in a manner different than the way he did. Because it's his desire for you to go farther and reach more and do better than he ever did. And that's what any true father would want. But a lot of times we're afraid to say, I'm not going to do it that way. Because we feel it will be interpreted as though we're judging or criticizing. And that's not what we're doing. We're just trying our best to be faithful to what God is showing us. And here's the new level. When what God shows you begins to inspire them, that's when they get to harvest. You see, up to this point, it's been so and show and so and show. But now God wants to deposit something that He'll reap from what God's shown you. And it'll take Him further than He ever... See, that's what fathers need. Fathers are not about just pour out, pour out, pour out. When are you going to bring something from heaven back to my life that's going to make my life and my ministry richer? God's going to show you some things in the coming days. Don't flinch. You're not disloyal. You're not dishonoring. But what you're going to do will add to, not take away from. Brother, you have a deposit from a natural man that is responsible for saving your soul. He's the one God used. But you belong to God. God brought you there, dropped you off for a deposit, but has picked you up and said, He was never yours to begin with. He's always been mine. And don't ever be afraid to let God add the finishing pieces because what man puts in us is actually by the hand of God. But don't reject the next thing God wants to put in you because it didn't come by man's hand. God will take you to another level. He'll take the limits off if you'll just say, all right, God, I've got what i got so far, but surely that's not the end of the road. Listen, Moses was born out of the loins of Amram, but it was Jethro that gave him what he needed for the fullness of his ministry. He never dishonored Amram. He just got to a place where God sent something to deposit in his spirit, and it was what the people needed. Brother, God may show you another way to talk, another way to preach, another way to go, another direction. Somebody said, but that's not who I am. It is who you are, but this is what it is. It's God, which you've had a man deposit on, and God wants to finish it, and it'll be something unique all unto itself. And it won't be a clone, because a clone says, all you have is what I have. But when you have what I have, so I trust it, but you have what God gave you, now I can partake of it. That's going to allow him to eat of the fruit of your tree that as he is father to son, 
Now the Son gives back unto the Father. There is great dynamic expansion awaiting, but it's not going to come if you reason away what the Lord begins to show you. Because you're going to go, I can't, that's, that doesn't, it goes against, and, and God will test you on some things. To see if you'll get the next instruction, he'll want to see, will you take this first step? And it'll be the first step that'll be the hardest one to take. Hallelujah. Listen, I just got something from the Lord for me. Hallelujah. God. Corporate prayer on Saturday mornings. I am removing from our Saturday morning schedule. Scott, get this message to Suzette. Somebody get it to John Darnell. Effective today. Not next week, not next month. We no longer pray corporately on Saturdays. We keep our Wednesday time, our Sunday time. We keep our called intercession times, our 24-hour intercession. But corporate prayer on Saturday. That's been the hardest thing for me to let go. I started this church. I put it in because that's the way I'd always done things. God said, what you doing there? I said, well, you know, that's what we do. I said, well, we won't do it an hour. We'll do it a half hour. Then I bumped it up to an hour because I didn't feel right. Then I took it back down to a half hour. I've been wrestling with that thing so much because I've always feared. Y'all don't pray on Saturdays? The corporate prayer, that's how we built the whole ministry. That's how that vision from God was built. But don't ever marry a method because what God wants to build through you will come by other means, by a different word of the Lord, but it will speak for itself. Thus say it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I have been wrestling with that corporate prayer thing for four years. For four years I've been wrestling with that thing. And God just dealt with me. He said, you're sitting here speaking into this man's life, but you won't do it yourself. You know how that works, right? God gets on me. And it all rolls downhill from there. We all blessed in this convention. You a pastor? Yeah, I thought you was a pastor. You look like a pastor. You you paying close attention, boy. You're looking, boy. Get looking. Amen. That's the way you're supposed to do it. But you'll never be the same. You been to my meeting before? Ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. You'll never be the same. You preach next time? See, when you preach next time? Ha. Huh. That's going to be an extension on your anointing. An extension on your anointing. Stay close. I don't know whose son you are. That's all right. Just stay, stay close. Feed on it. Watch it. Watch every move be made. Your ministry will go to another dimension. Glory to God. Don't even know his name. Don't know where he's from. But he kept standing out. The Lord said, you say something to him. I got him here for a reason. <laughs> Hallelujah. Elisha draw it on Elijah until he got ready to go. Elijah said, I'm about to get out of here, boy. What you want? <laughs> Elijah said, I want double portion of your spirit, of your anointing. You know he did twice as much than Elijah? Huh? Oh, boys, I got a word for you now. Why well, it's important that y'all to be at these meetings. You know what he said to Elisha? If you see me. Suppose he wasn't there. <laughs> he had to be there to see you. You understand what I'm saying? church been going? 
Hold hands with each other. Close your eyes. I saw you, close your eyes. I saw you in someone else's shadow. It's almost like if someone has a big brother, then they have a little brother in the shadow. The Lord says to you, you're not the, in the shadow anymore. It's like when Dave DeMola prophesied over me when he said, you used to be David the shepherd boy, but now you're David the king. The Lord says unto you, you have just stepped into another phase of your ministry. Your own uniqueness, your own personality, your own spirit, you and your wife is going to rise to the top. And thank God for what you learn from people and mentors and things, but you have a different spirit. And the Lord has raised you up for such a time as this. And in the name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, step in. I call him. Somebody give the Lord a clap and a shout. Hey now, hey now, hey now.